we're now crossing the Atacama Desert, which is officially the driest place on Earth. Uh, I don't know about driest, but it's certainly the coldest desert. So I left Arequipa for a one night stopover in Maquegua before crossing the border into Chile and heading for my next stop which was the town of Arica. Got my paperwork complete for Chile, so now I'm officially um, official on the road to Chile, and now it's time to find a hotel. After a brief one-night stopover in Arica, I headed further down the coast to the city of Iquique. Arrived in the town of Iquique about an hour ago, and uh, I tried every hotel, hostel I could find, no accommodation anywhere. Every every hotel is full. It's the height of the summer. But eventually, the assistance paid off and I managed to locate at great expense, not only in a hotel room, but um, my own private apartment, which is nice and cosy, uh, with a sea view over there. The only trouble is, if I had to lug all my luggage a couple of blocks, I didn't realise it was such a walk from where I had to leave my bike. Nevertheless, I'm here for two days, or an hour, and I might hit the beach later on. Iquique was a prosperous mining town in the 19th century. Today it's a popular holiday destination with a tax-free port area and it's famous for its beaches. get when you're a cappuccino in Iquique, Chile. Mm. Not exactly a flat white, is it? From Iquique, I just followed the coast roads straight south to the small town of Tocopilla. I left Iquique this morning uh, on my way to Anto Fagasta, uh, but it's quite a long ride, so after 140 miles, I thought this would be a place to stop. Tocopilla, which is a kind of small, relatively small town, but it's more of an industrial um, fishing port, really. And to be honest, it smells like it too. 
but um, a nice backdrop of the of the mountains in the background but it's a bit scuzzy if I'm honest in fact pretty scuzzy and that particularly attractive um, uh, fishing port or some kind of terminal I guess now yeah strong smell of something fishy Hotel Changora, let's just see what we can get for thirty dollars in Chile. So scuzzy carpets. This is my Hotel Changora, room fourteen. This is it. Thirty dollars a night. It's got a carpet that I don't really want to walk on. Uh, but that's on my feet. You know, basic. It's got a shower, but it's not the kind of place you want to spend an awful lot of time in, if I'm honest. More like a cell. Yeah, kind of a shanty town, really. Nothing attractive about it whatsoever. But it's a bed for the night, albeit an expensive one. Thirty dollars. Chili is not cheap. From Tocopilla, my route took me still further south for an uneventful night stay in Antofagasta before I headed via the Atacama Desert to the little seaside town of Taltal. I'm on, the, I'm on the way to um, Anta uh, Fagasta <laughs> and uh, we've ground to a halt here because apparently there's some uh, bicycle race which um, we're told by a friend Mati there from, uh, from Germany He's by, he said it's going to be 10 minutes or so um, before we can move on but there's a big long queue down, down there which I've just come to the front of and, um, We'll see how long it's going to take that everybody's waiting here for the cycle race. crossing the Atacama Desert which is officially the driest place on earth. Uh, I don't know about driest but it's certainly the coldest desert I've passed through but I think it's about 2,600 meters. And uh, about 10 miles back I passed a very famous observatory that's been built here because it's uh, supposed to be the clearest uh, spot on earth. Very little pollution Unfortunately, it wasn't allowed to go in and have a look at it, specialised personnel only. So this is the famous Patacoma Desert. Drier than the Sahara, I believe. The Atacama is the driest hot desert in the world. In fact, there are some weather stations in the Atacama where there has never been any rain recorded, ever. It's all about for miles and miles. I bet this is how Ewan and Charlie filmed a long way around.
guess this must have been uh, one of the original trains uh, transported people around here going back a few years now and uh, this is my hotel Pesos, which is about 28 quid. Still quite expensive, but it's quite nice. As we'll see, nice and uh, peaceful. This is my room number four. This is an area just to chill out. Yes, I think I might sit this afternoon and do. Uh, Write my blog up. This is um, the little seaside town of Town Town. I arrived about an hour ago. Just been wandering around town to get some, uh, some cash out. But uh, fortunately, I saw up and out to these little towns. I have one ATM machine and it doesn't accept my card. So I'm not going to hold for the, uh, the hotel. It takes credit cards. Otherwise, I'm going to pretty thin until we get to the next city, uh, Kubiapo, which is about three and a half hours' ride. From Still, nice by the sea, lovely smell of the sea, fish, and I've got a decent hotel, which is nice. Got myself a nice hotel, still expensive, it's about um, £24 a night. And now I'm on a tight budget, I'm down to the main plaza to have my lunch. And uh, this is my lunch. Banana and a piece of bread. No. From Tao Tao, I continued making my way south for the next three days with one night stopovers in Copiapo, La Serena, eventually heading for the little town of La Calera, from where I would go due east across the Andes and finally cross the border into Argentina. I'm now in uh, the little town of El. Calera, uh, which is just a few, I don't know, 100 kilometers this side of the Argentine border. And I've just checked into a hotel, which has to be the scuzziest place I've ever stayed in. Okay, so this is my room. There's a padlock on the door. And um, yeah, it's uh, Bijou. You know, it's like uh, reminds me of the Shawshank Redemption. Um, pretty, pretty grotty. Seven thousand pesos a night. I suppose I can't complain. From La Calera, it was a five hour ride across the Andes to head for Argentina and ultimately cross the border and head into Mendoza.
Mendoza is noted for being a cosmopolitan city and known for its tree-lined streets, sunny climate and more importantly, world-famous Malbec wine. In Mendoza, in the Plaza Independencia. Plaza Independencia and now we're in Plaza Chile. I'm here in Mendoza, it's beer o'clock, it's still early but beer o'clock for me and I'm in uh, one of the many kind of cafes and restaurants on these boulevards. It's a really nice place, nice chilled atmosphere. Nothing's really open yet because it's still early but um, I'm hungry. So I've just settled down with my beer, my glass of good Argentine red wine, waiting for my uh, meat to arrive, and just writing up some notes, planning my return home. So, all is well with the world. So I'm treating myself to a steak and uh, half a bottle of wine. Oh. Yum, yum. From Mendoza, my plan was just to slowly take my time and head due east to Buenos Aires. But the first stop along the way was the little town of San Luis. Day at the plaza and of the country. This is uh, San Luis. Uh, I arrived here a couple of hours ago. It's the after time, it's very quiet, but um, this is the main plaza. No doubt, it'll be buzzing this evening. The next day, I continued heading east with overnight stays in Rio Cuarto, Venado Tuerto, and eventually ended up by accident in a tiny little town of San Antonio de Arico, which was actually less than an hour away from Buenos Aires, but nevertheless, a good place to have a stopover. It wasn't part of my plan to stop in San Antonio de Rico. It was a last minute decision. But while I was studying my map, two men approached me. 
So I, went, I just arrived in San Antonio de Rico and I just met these two. Uh, your name is? Santiago. Santiago. I'm a Please fan of Northampton. Oscar. Oscar. Santiago's father. Oscar and Santiago, and a fan of Northampton. He knows uh, Federico Mendes, yes. a great Argentine prop. It turns out that Santiago was a big fan of rugby and a big fan of Northampton Rugby Club, where the great Argentine prop Federico Mendes once played. What a small world. <laughs> and uh, we just bumped into it on this corner. I'm trying to find a hotel. I um, will find it for you. Yeah. And uh, we admire you. Yes. <laughs> for your courage. At the quaint little town of San Antonio de Rico and courtesy of my new friends uh, Oscar and Santiago who are bumped into on the corner they found me a really nice little hotel. Hotel for was? Uh, 110 pesos a night, secure parking, Wi-Fi, the whole works, fantastic. And uh, added bonus, I've been invited to dinner tonight. Unfortunately, it's 9.30, so how am I going to stay awake to that late? I never know, but um, looking forward to it. In Santiago and Paula's fantastic house, I've been invited as a guest with all these amazing people. Brian is our special guest tonight. Fantastic food, fantastic wine. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Cheers. So we've discovered that there's a secret chocolate stash. So the special chocolate drawers. No, yes. And Paula hides them away here. And so this is select friends. Select friends. For the ones that can feel the difference, no? Yeah. Supposed to be the best chocolate in the world. Oh right. It's here and it's mine. See me off. The girls wanted to see the bike before I left. Yes. Yeah. Haven't had much sleep last night. Puro Santiago's been uh, up since uh, six o'clock. Not much sleep. You, you've had about three hours sleep last yeah. night. Yeah. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. It's, uh, I have a long day. It wears so. me out. Well, it was very nice to meet you. And you Brian. too. It's been. Uh, Hope to see you again. After an amazing and very late night with Santiago, his family and friends, I set off the next day for the short an hour and a half ride into Buenos Aires, where I was going to stay with Dakar Motos. Run by a couple called Javier and Sandra, they also organised the shipping of most bikes back from Buenos Aires back to England. So while they were organising the paperwork, I stayed with them for three days and took an opportunity to have a look around Buenos Aires at the same time. Just made it to Buenos Aires, arrived here at Dakar Motors. It's been a, a long time coming, but here I am. And this is Ralph. Hello. So where are you going, Ralph? Where are you? Trying to go home, but uh, probably Houston's the next stop. So where have you been? Uh, started in Canada and Pan Americana, all the way down to Ushuaia. Oh, fantastic. And then up to uh, Iguazu Falls. And then flying out from Buenos Aires in the next week, I would think, to, and then Mexico, and then back up to Canada. Fantastic. Florida Estación. I'm waiting for a train to go down into uh, Buenos Aires, into the center. Um, apparently it's about 15 minutes. And um, just hoping I get the right train to get back. Plan was to complete my paperwork, pay my export fees, ride my bike to the airport, and then get a bus back to the city where I was going to spend a couple of nights relaxing before flying back home to Blighty made it to the airport after a much longer ride than I expected I'm running out of petrol fast and I'm parked here and I'm waiting for somebody called Ariel who's supposed to meet me here to help me get the bike processed for export uh, customs and all that kind of stuff um, 
but nobody's around at the moment so I guess we'll just have to wait here until somebody shows up After quite a long delay he eventually did show up so the next few hours were spent prepping the bike ready for shipping back to England. I'm here at the uh, terminal, cargo terminal. The bike is almost ready for being crated, it's on the pallet. I've uh, taken the screen and ring mirrors off, they've load, loads of tire pressure. I haven't disconnected the battery, I hope I can get away with that, but uh, now I'm just waiting for customs to come and check it. How long that's going to be, who knows, this is South America. It happens when it happens. I said goodbye to my bike and headed back to the city where I'd found a cheap hotel for the next couple of days while I waited for my flight back to England. My hotel I found in the centre of Buenos Aires is cheap but functional. So it's really central, right down in the middle of the pedestrian area. Lunchtime in Buenos Aires. The Simpsons just don't work in Spanish. Typical night in downtown Buenos Aires, the street theatre. Welcome to Argentina, home of the tango. I met up with my new friend Santiago and he kindly took me on a mini tour of the city. So you, so you work for Microsoft in Dublin? Yeah, in Sandy Fork, the innovation center. And, and from Dublin you actually came back to Argentina? I went for the dentist. I came back for a dentist because it was very expensive there <laughs> in Dublin. <laughs> and then I met my wife and I am here. So listen, I'm, I'm in Santiago, he's taken to this amazingly trendy... San Telmo. Uh, in San Telmo, which is a very trendy place. And this amazing kind of uh, pub, come bar, come restaurant. And he just gave me the low down on his, uh, his travelling days. You know, back in the old days when he travelled for uh, one year and eight months around the world. Jang with hair. With hair. <laughs> Santiago, excuse me, you're not allowed to fish. It's, it's, it's illegal because it's all polluted. So that's why everybody's fishing. And we've got here, it says, camping prohibited. You're not allowed to put tents up. You know, so that's why they've got tents over there. This is the famous River Plate. And Santiago assures me that it's the widest river in the world. Isn't that right? Maybe it's. <laughs> it's official now. It's official. It's pretty polluted though. I wouldn't want to yeah. swim in that. There's a little fish in it as well but it stretches for miles and miles. While some people regard the river plate as a river, a lot of people regard it an estuary. And it separates Montevideo, which is the capital of Uruguay, and located on the northern shore of the estuary, and Buenos Aires, the capital of Argentina, on the southwestern shore. So, the river plate. Welcome to my um, hotel in Buenos Aires. It's, um, Pretty basic. Let's have a look. 
This has got a fan. There we go. Oh god, it's hot stick in here. It's so hot and humid. But this is my last night. So everything's perfect. After my tour of the city with Santiago, I had one more day to unwind before my flight back home. The day I left for the airport, the 35 degrees and high humidity of typical Buenos Aires weather turned to the more favourable wet, cold and greyness. Typical English weather. So that was that folks, after 20,000 miles, 15 countries and 8 months, I finally made it back home in one piece. Just, but what an adventure. <laughs>